they're, they're saying Israel is a terrorist state. Anyway, so some of these um, far left anti democratic groups have joined, by jumped on the bandwagon here. Pulls out the austerity uh, campaign. All right, I mean, it's reasonable to be against austerity, but usually it's a front for um, the ultra left. Okay, and then ISIS, Israel's secret intelligence service. So claiming that uh, Israel was behind ISIS. I'm not sure about that, but it is true that Mas Mossad has sometimes supported most reactionary Islamist movements as a way of dividing, enfeebling, and indeed besmirching the movement of Palestinian freedom. So you see there was the Arab-Israeli um, arm, um, Israeli war of independence, but Israel was successful against several Arab, Arab armies in May 1948, within days of uh, becoming independent. And uh, a third of the Jewish population in the world have been annihilated in just three years in the Second World War. So many Jews said, we need to find a safe haven. We thought we were safe in Germany. There'd be no anti-Semitic laws for 85 years before the Nazis came to office. There'd be no anti-Semitic murders in Germany for decades beforehand. And uh, Germany wasn't even the most anti-Semitic country in Christendom, not by a long way until 1933, but very rapidly ramped up. And with nine, nine years, there was industrial scale slaughter of the Jewish community. So they said, we've got to fight for survival. And if we have to be unethical, well, so be it. These uh, Palestinians, they're, they're Ishmaelites, like all the, the others in the Middle East, well, almost all the others. They're, they're Muslims, you know, 95% of them. And they can just live in some other Arab Muslim country like Jordan or Egypt, and indeed some of them have. Maybe they weren't distinct people. The old Zionist uh, fallacy, a uh, people without a land for a land without a people. Almost as though Palestinians weren't people. But, OK, it might be true that Palestinian identity wasn't particularly distinct under the 20th century, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist at all. Every country's got to come into being at some point. Not so many countries are poorly with age. And often there's this, uh, this notion that the Palestinians are invented people. That's advanced by people like Newt Gingrich, an ultra-right-wing American politician who was uh, keen on the death penalty for uh, dealing even cannabis. But um, anyway, uh, obviously every country is invented. Every country is man-made. Every country has got to start sometime. Some of them can trace their histories back thousands of years, like Egypt or India. Some of them were created only a few years ago. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not countries. And so Palestine is re recognized as a sovereign state by about 100 others, but can't get into the United Nations or any of its ancillary organizations uh, because um, Israel and its uh, allies, the United, the United States, will always thwart it. They will, they, will block Israel, uh, they will block Palestine joining UNESCO or anything like that. So to prevent Palestinian statehood. So, so much for a two-state solution. So Palestine's been under illegal military occupation for, for decades. Uh, obviously, the, the, the Jordanians administered the West Bank and the Egyptians administered the, the Gaza Strip, I think, with, with the Palestinians' uh, consent, because uh, this, was a, this was a fledgling state. Very difficult to get their, their, themselves on their feet creating an independent government when they lost two-thirds of the country and um, they were the, the, the two parts of Palestine, nominally independent, were divided by a hostile state, Israel. And then what was the next thing that happened? So then there's a 1967 war, the Six-Day War, in which Israel triumphed in short order. Um, it's a surprise attack. Some would say unprovoked, but that's not quite true. They certainly hugely escalated it. But there was a doctrine of preemption was, was, was invoked there. Trouble is, that bites back. The other side could also invoke the doctrine of preemption, such as the Yom Kippur War of um, November 1973. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so the... Uh, Illegal occupation of, of a Palestine cannot extinguish its right to exist. Uh, Palestinian land has been stolen. I mean that in an absolutely literal sense, and Palestinians driven out and their property given to Jews. In fairness to Israel, um, the Jews have been driven out of uh, Morocco, Egypt, uh, Iraq, and so on, and their property confiscated without compensation. All, all, all Jewish men were to be imprisoned in Egypt. So they had to flee. So where were they to go? So to some extent, it was a property exchange. But uh, Palestinians who've lived in other Arab countries for decades, uh, you know, born there, been there for several generations, often they can't get citizenship of those uh, countries. So you'll find pa the Palestinian diaspora in many countries throughout the Arab world, but uh, in places like the United States, becoming American citizens and so forth. Um, so uh, they're obviously not happy about the way that they've been deprived of their rights. Uh, what about national self-determination? So. If Israel has the right to be secure in her own borders, so does Palestine. So we sometimes forget who is occupying whom. And, um, you know, Israel, yes, is entitled to exist. Palestine is too. Israel is entitled to defend herself. All right, then, so is Palestine. And as Palestine is under illegal occupation, it's surely permitted to resist this because um, peaceful protest is, 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 is getting it nowhere. Now, I'm not a pacifist. I prefer if nobody got killed. One thing is it does seem that uh, resistance is futile. <coughs> Israel is mightier than ever. 
economically stronger, so prosperous, even found oil in the Mediterranean Sea, and that the Arab cause, the Arabs have largely um, abandoned the Palestinian cause. Uh, you know, um, so several Gulf Arab states having established diplomatic relations with Israel, most recently the United Arab Emirates, and they're more preoccupied with the threat from Iran than they are asserting the, the, the liberty of Palestine. So um, being, being occupied doesn't disentitle the Palestinians from having their independent homeland. If they wish to fuse with uh, Jordan or Egypt, then and, and Jordan or Egypt want to take them, fine. But so far as I know, they don't. Now, it's true there are more Palestinians in Jordan than there are in Palestine, but uh, that's because they were driven out and they're more or less living under a siege in Gaza. So the Israelis tried to make it almost unbearable there so that some of them would choose to leave. Uh, policy which has been uh, largely uh, successful. Anyway, so here we are, that's Parliament Square, and the protest is uh, dispersing. The point has been made, but sadly, I don't think uh, the Israelis are about to end the occupation. Why should they? They've been bankrolled by the United States. There's not much pressure, they don't face many attacks. The boycott, d divest, and, and sanctions movement um, has uh, not uh, come to fruition. So uh, Israel's position is uh, stronger than ever. So I don't think that uh, the Palestinians will be able to secure their rights any time soon. It's a very unfair world and bad guys often win. I'm not saying that all or most Israelis are bad, and they're more than saying that all or most Palestinians are good. I know everyone's a mixture of good and bad. It'd be splendid to find a compromise, but Israel's making very few concessions, and again, why, sh why should they? Um, there's not much incentive for them to compromise. They wouldn't see any disbenefit in um, ceding land, and uh, the um, ultra-nationalists, the uh, ethno-nationalists, they seem to be in the ascendant in Israel, but they seem to be form forming this new broad-bottom coalition with the Kadima party, Naftali Bennett, at the helm, likely be prime minister. So um, Benjamin Netanyahu has dominated politics for almost 30 years. He might be finally sent packing. I mean, he's not been prime minister all that time. Will he finally choose to bow out? The guy is uh, 72. Anyway, I'm about to cross uh, Westminster Bridge. So I hope you found this a little bit educative about the Palestinian situation. And some of the, the decisions uh, were made here. Remember, it was Arthur James Balfour, the former prime minister, and he was a foreign secretary at the time, He's the one who issued the Balfour Declaration in uh, December 1917, saying His Majesty's government would view with favor the establishment of Palestine as a Jewish national home, without prejudice to the rights of existing communities, i.e. the Palestinian Arabs. That was never put into effect. I wish it was more widely realized in the United States that um, some of the Palestinians are Christians, and they're therefore descendants of the original Christians. But uh, the Bible bashers in the United States tend to be um, fanatical Zionists, and many of them are anti-Arab. Now, a lot of people here were, were, were visibly Muslims wearing hijabs and so on, um, and others were um, Ishmaelites, whether, whether, whether um, uh, Mohammedans or not. So that's just a little bit about Palestine. Please subscribe. Bye.